reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. We are only the earthenware jars that hold this treasure. To make it clear that such an overwhelming power comes from God and not from us. We are in difficulties on all sides, but never cornered. We see no answer to our problems, but never despair. We have been persecuted, but never deserted, knocked down, but never killed. Always, wherever we may be, we carry with us in our body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus too may always be seen in our body. Indeed, while we are still alive, we are consigned to our death every day for the sake of Jesus, so that in our mortal flesh, the life of Jesus too may be openly shown. So, death is at work in us, but life in you. But as we have the same spirit of faith that is mentioned in Scripture, I believed and therefore I spoke, we too believe and therefore we too speak, knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus to life will raise us with Jesus in our turn and put us by his side and you with us. You see, all this is for your benefit so that the more grace is multiplied among people, the more thanksgiving there will be to the glory of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Those who are sowing in tears will sing when they reap. Those who are sowing in tears will sing when they reap. When the Lord delivered Zion from bondage, it seemed like a dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter. On our lips there were songs. Those, Those who, who were are sowing, sowing in tears, tears will, will sing when, when they, they reap. reap. The heathens themselves said, what marvels the Lord worked for them. What marvels the Lord worked for us. Indeed, we were glad. Those, Those who, who are sowing, sowing in tears will sing when they, they reap. reap. Deliver us, O Lord, from our bondage, as streams in dry land. Those who are sowing in tears will sing when they reap. Those, Those who, who are, are sowing in tears will sing when they, they reap. reap. They go out, they go out full of tears, carrying seed for the sowing. They come back, they come back full of song, carrying their sheaves. Those who are sowing in tears will sing when they reap. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. The mother of the sons of Zebedee came with them to make a request of him and bowed low, and he said to her, What is it you want? She said to him, Promise that these two sons of mine may sit, one at your right hand and the other at your left in the kingdom. You do not know what you are asking, Jesus answered. Can you drink the cup that I am going to drink? They replied, we can. Very well, he said, you shall drink my cup. But as for seats at my right hand and my left, these are not mine to grant. They belong to those to whom they've been allotted by my father. When the other ten heard this, they were indignant with the two brothers. But Jesus called them to him and said, You know that among the pagans the rulers lord it over them, and the great men make their authority felt. This is not to happen among you. No, anyone who wants to be great among you must be your servant, 
And anyone who wants to be first among you must be your slave, just as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Father Roy is an optimist, suggesting that there'll be all but no homily. Uh, that was, I have to say, the plan uh, before morning prayer this morning when something struck me. To begin by saying the Feast of St. James uh, appealed to us as a good day on which Father Thomas might make his profession of faith, faith handed down from the apostles, though in fact the creed is not usually part of this feast day. But the feast brings with it another element, and we are reminded at morning prayer that the Lord saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, and called them both. And that later, Jesus took Peter, James, and John, the brother of James, and led them up a high mountain. And as we've just heard in the Gospel, that the mother of the sons of Zebedee came to Jesus with her sons, and he asks them, can you drink the cup that I'm going to drink? And they replied, we can. It struck me at morning prayer that these are important words. And they replied, we can. The Lord in the gospel sends out his disciples two by two. He sets the model for both mutual support and for collaborative ministry. You could say that Bishop Richard, our successor to the Apostles, has gone one better in appointing three priests, or indeed three better in appointing a team of five clergy, and please God, next year, uh, seven. But as you'll recall, even before the days when everything was videoed, when the bishop came to induct us as a team three years ago, I noted in my words of reply that we weren't a team of three, but of 3,000 that collaboration should be the whole of the parish working together to be that witness to the town. It is, please God, a work in progress. When Father Seb left at his farewell, I thanked him most sincerely for all that he had done. And today, as we begin a new chapter, seems an appropriate moment too to thank Father Roy for all that he does and indeed to thank no, not myself, but to thank you. The pandemic has caused us to reflect and to review. The messages and emails which you have been sharing, the work being undertaken by so many in many often quiet ways, speaks wonderfully of this parish. In many ways, it gives a real confidence that the months ahead will be a new beginning. It will be different, but I know that it will bring many blessings. And so we begin, as it were, today by thanking Bishop Richard for appointing Father Thomas, who will himself be a great blessing as part of the parish team, in every sense of the words, the parish team. And we begin by reading the letter of the appointment that Bishop Richard has sent. Richard, by the grace of God and favour of the Apostolic See, Bishop of Arundel and Brighton, to our beloved son in Christ, the Reverend Thomas Kent, in accordance with the provisions of Canon 517 of the Code of Canon Law, and by the decree of the 8th day of September in the year of our Lord, 1995, the parish of Guildford is entrusted to a team ministry. For the due pastoral care of this parish, I wish to appoint a priest to in solidum with the other members of this team and under the direction of its moderator will share in the pastoral care to be exercised. You are that priest. Accordingly, by these presents and in virtue of Canon 542, I hereby appoint you as a member of the team ministry of the above-named parish, Agnunctum Episcopi. 
the pastoral responsibilities, juridical obligations and rights of the priests to whom the care of this parish is jointly entrusted are set out in Canon 543 of the Code of Canon Law. My signature and seal appended below authenticate your new status. Before you take up this appointment, I require you, in accordance with Canon 542, to make in my presence or that of my representative a profession of faith approved by the Holy See. Given at Arundel this 11th day of July in the year of our Lord 2020, Richard, Bishop of Arundel and Brighton. So representing the Bishop, I invite now Father Thomas to make that profession of faith. I, Thomas James Kent, with firm faith, believe and profess each and everything that is contained in the symbol of faith. Namely, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With firm faith, I also believe everything contained in the word of God, whether written or handed down in tradition, which the church, either by a solemn judgment or by the ordinary and universal magisterium, sets forth to be believed as divinely revealed. I also firmly accept and hold each and everything definitively proposed by the church regarding teaching on faith and morals. Moreover, I adhere with religious submission of will and intellect to the teachings which either the Roman Pontiff or the College of Bishops enunciate when they exercise their authentic magisterium, even if they do not intend to proclaim these teachings by a definitive act. I, Thomas James Kent, in, this, in assuming the office of parish team member, promise that in my words and in my actions, I shall always preserve communion with the Catholic Church. With great care and fidelity, I shall carry out the duties incumbent on me toward the Church, both universal and particular, in which according to the provisions of the law, I have been called to exercise my service. In fulfilling the charge entrusted to me in the name of the church, 
I shall hold fast to the deposit of faith in its entirety. I shall faithfully hand it on and explain it. And I shall avoid any teachings contrary to it. I shall follow and foster the common discipline of the entire church. And I shall maintain the observance of all ecclesiastical laws, especially those contained in the code of canon law. With Christian obedience, I shall follow what the bishops, as authentic doctors and teachers of the faith, declare, or what they, as those who govern the church, establish. I shall also faithfully assist the diocesan bishop so that the apostolic activity exercised in the name and by mandate of the church may be carried out in communion with the church. So help me God and God's holy gospels on which I place my hand.